uh, yes, I uh, received some uh, feedback from undergraduate students. Uh, they said in uh, because we have uh, about uh, uh, 50 participants uh, in uh, in just uh, fourth or fifth semester uh, in uh, its uh, education and uh, they uh, uh, maybe some of them uh, not passed uh, uh, advanced mathematics or uh, yes, I, mathematical uh, physics Oh, well, uh, yeah, I completely understand, uh, uh, Jimmy. But uh, to be honest with you, this is a, a, um, uh, this is very, very standard. Uh, I mean, I'm not going, I'm not doing something beyond uh, the undergraduate. He's not really advanced uh, mathematical physics. He's really undergraduate level. Yes. Um, yeah, so, but I'm uh, sorry to hear this. <laughs> In average, we have uh, uh, fixed uh, about 100 uh, participants uh, in the uh, Zoom, and yes. maybe 50 percent in the uh, YouTube. And it is very, very good. Uh, I think uh, we have never uh, have uh, uh, such as this. Uh, online course in the, the Kurdistan region. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Jamil. And I see the comments uh, which some students, they say that they have seen that in a second year of bachelor degree, which is very true. Yeah. Uh, and Subra is asking if uh, I will be teaching the differential geometry. Yes, I will be still, I mean, thank we you. have it. Thank and you. Uh, Isa is asking about the book. I will send you the book, Isa. And I send the file. And one person say that I cannot see the file. Uh, we, 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 we will send the file uh, in classroom or by email for the participants. Okay, lovely. So if that's okay, we already 10 minutes behind. Let's start the, 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 uh, the final part of the differential geometry. And today, uh, uh, um, we will we will go and we will finish what we started with. <laughs> okay, so uh, and remember that so far we are working in the coordinate parameters of QI, and that was a contravariant coordinate. Uh, and, and I say as an example that can be spherical coordinates that can be R, theta, and phi, or can be Cartesian, which can be x, y, and z. And then we say that, well, you can have a scalar quantity and these scalar quantities essentially can be expanded in terms of these uh, parameter, which is QI, right? Now, the question that we had, I mean, we, we talk about the, the tensor formalism, we talk about the vector formalism, the contraction, the product, the, uh, the direct product, the inner product. And also we looked, we talked about the pseudo, uh, uh, pseudo vector and also pseudo tensor. And we, we went through all of those calculations, but well, and, uh, and, and, and why we are doing this, by the way, I mean, uh, it was a comment of one of the students, I, I think it was Isa or someone else, that they say, well, uh, why we are doing this? Because we want to find the, the equations which, uh, which is telling us what's happening with the physics at different coordinates. And these, uh, the physics should be independent of the, of the coordinate that you choose. For example, uh, you can be close to, uh, you can choose the spherical coordinate, you can choose the cylindrical coordinate, the elliptical coordinate, but what you are dealing with, the physics that you are going to describe is the same. So it looks like you're having a vector and this vector is, the, is, the, is one specific vector, but you can describe it in, I don't know, Cartesian, spherical or whatever, but the, the rules that this vector is evolving in time or in space is the same, okay? So what we want to try is finding out those rules and those formations. For example, if I ask you what is going on with light, uh, how do I describe the light? You say I'm describing maxilla with maxilla equations. And if you say that is in vacuum, we drive it uh, with uh, with what we call a wave equation. And if you recall, we, we talk about, let's say, the uh, with the source or without the source. Or when you write the 
Schrodinger equation, you write the Schrodinger equation, but in which coordinate? Are you writing in Cartesian coordinate? Are you writing in a cylindrical coordinate or spherical coordinate? The physics should be the same. But in some of those coordinates, it's really easier to solve the problem. Okay, that's the reason that we go with the quariant uh, 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 and uh, contravariant formalism. So that was a contravariant uh, parameters that we had in the calculation. And we say that, for example, I have a scalar quantity like man, like a temperature, which can be expanded in, in that basis. So you can say that, well, in that specific location, that's a temperature in some other places that can be a different temperature. Now I'm looking at what is happening with the derivative of psi. So definitely psi is a function. I'm looking at how this temperature, let's say, is evolving in space in that specific space, then the result of this will be derivative of psi with respect to qi, and then I have a qi. Lovely. So that is nothing surprising. Even in the Cartesian coordinate, we say the same. We say that psi is a function of x, y, and z, and then you look at the derivative of psi. So then you will get how that is changing with respect to x, with respect to y, or with respect to z. And then from there, what you define, you define the gradient which is essentially the scalar, con uh, scalar quantity, how the, uh, that evolves upon changing X, the pain changing Y or changing Z, okay? And that was what we find in the gradient of the, of the temperature, which essentially is a vector, is not a scalar quantity. So, and uh, for example, in Cartesian coordinate, in the Cartesian coordinates, that was given by the psi was gradient of psi dot dr, okay? Which uh, essentially that was, if I write, want to write it in a, in a closed form, that was a derivative of this with respect to xi dxi. And then uh, while well, when, when we say that dr indeed is given by dxi and epsilon i, or here it was unit vector of ei, and EIs, they were orthonormal. So it means that EI, that EJ was equal to delta of IJ. I'm not paying attention to quariant or contravariant notation here. And then we define the, uh, the, the gradient in, in the Cartesian coordinate. So now I'm talking about a very general formalism. That's the general formalism that I have. So if that is given in terms of the uh, uh, contravariant, uh, let's say, parameters of QI, that will be the result that you expect. So, for example, in the cylindrical coordinate, that can be derivative of psi with respect to rho, uh, derivative of psi with respect to uh, uh, phi, derivative of psi uh, with respect to z. So that's in the cylindrical coordinate. Okay. But however, I know that d psi is given by derivative of psi with respect to the contravariant coordinates of the parameters of qi. But what is happening with the displacement? How was the displacement? So the displacement indeed was given by a derivative of r uh, uh, with respect to derivative of r with respect to uh, uh, with respect to qi, and then dqi. Okay, because the, what's the same scenario, R is a function now of uh, QI. And then we want to take the derivative, that will be the result. And we call these, if you remember, we call these epsilon I, which was covariant vector basis. Okay. So, well, Compare these two together, and I know that the gradient of psi dot dr will be given by d psi, okay? Then I'm asking you, can you define what is the gradient? The gradient clearly in that specific coordinate is not simply this value, because if I want to, I want to look at the, the, the expression that will be the gradient of psi that I'm replacing with the dr, which will be epsilon i, dqi. Then 
From here, I will, I will get the, the gradient of psi that epsilon i dqi, this will be equal to the result here. That's result. So indeed, from this definition, I can say we can obtain the components of the gradient, or we can say that the gradient of psi is equal to epsilon i, derivative of psi with respect to qi. Remember, this epsilon i is not normalized, okay? And in general, epsilon i is a vector which is function, which is a function of the coordinates. Okay. We had examples. I mean, in the past, we solved that example. So, well, from here, I can find that the gradient of psi indeed is given by epsilon i, derivative of psi with respect to qi. Remember, Epsilon i dot epsilon j that will be given by delta of uh, not 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 really sorry my apologies that was g i j which was somehow related to the metric but we know how to calculate the epsilon i so epsilon i that epsilon j that was the a, a covariant metric metric tensor and we know that from um, if, have, knowing the metric you can build up epsilon i from epsilon j which indeed epsilon i uh, was given by g i j epsilon j. So if you recall, last time we had the lecture during the lecture, we calculated what's going on with epsilon r. And uh, for and let's do this for uh, just to clarify. Remember that was for spherical coordinates. We calculated for spherical coordinates, which we had epsilon r uh epsilon r was um guys can you help uh, can you help me so it was r hat epsilon theta was uh r theta hat and epsilon phi was r sine of theta phi hat can you can you type it in the Q and A if uh, we drive this last time, and uh, can you confirm that that's the right one? Yes. Okay. Mobin says this. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And from this, we built up what's going on with. Uh, um, we can we can build up what's going on with the uh, epsilon uh, r. But uh, we are now looking at the contravariant uh, 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 basis vector, which is uh, which is given by G i j, and uh, we did the calculation. Oh, let's! Uh, I have to do a little bit of uh, mathematics now. So from this, we had uh, G i j, which G i j was uh, one r square r square sine two of theta, and G i j was the inverse of this. Uh, we, we find it based on the going with isotropic uh, delta function, which uh, delta of uh, Kronecker sine of two theta. And then from here, we calculated what's going on with epsilon r, which was a uh, uh, GRR r and the GR theta and et cetera, which they are zero. So that will be again r hat. And epsilon theta was uh, uh, going to be one divided by r uh, theta hat. 
and epsilon phi was one divided by r sine of theta phi hat. Correct? I, we had these last time. Okay. If that's correct, then we can move on. Uh, let me see the Q&A. Yes, moving also confirmed this, that that was the, what we obtained from the last lecture. Um, well, now, uh, based on the fact that for the spherical coordinate I obtained this, let's write the gradient of psi, which is epsilon i, derivative of psi with respect to qi, in the spherical coordinates. So here I will expand it. That will be epsilon r, derivative of psi with respect to r, epsilon uh, theta, derivative of psi with respect to theta, plus uh, epsilon, uh, epsilon phi, derivative of psi with respect to phi. And what is epsilon r? Uh, I mean, the contravariant vectors, um, vector basis. This is uh, indeed r hat. This is indeed one divided by r theta hat. This is indeed one divided by r side of theta phi hat. So in, in fact, the result of this will be r hat derivative of r of phi, uh, sorry, my apologies, psi plus theta hat one divided by r derivative with respect to theta of psi plus uh, phi hat divided by r sine of theta derivative of psi with respect to uh, phi. Okay, so this is the way that you can find the gradient in any coordinate that you want. So uh, what you need is only you need to find out what's going on with the metric, and then from the metric, you can build up this. In the same way, you can build up uh, what's going on with the gradient in, in a spherical coordinate, in a cylindrical coordinate. Is that clear, or should I drive that for the cylindrical coordinate too? Can you type in the Q&A, please? All good, okay. Isa says all good, all good. Not needed, perfect, thank you very much. So, uh, well, remember, that is the definition of the gradient. So gradient of psi is written by epsilon i, derivative of psi with respect to qi. Usually if, if you recall, in the past also, I say that derivative of psi uh, with respect to Q, I say, oh, sorry, uh, what I have done with the, with the computer. Okay, it's okay. So um, I say that derivative with respect to QI, usually in short, we write it as a derivative with respect to I. Okay, so this is indeed is derivative of this, of i of psi. So those, of course, with the epsilon i, they are the coefficient that you are expecting. So indeed, this epsilon i should be normalized. And this is what the, what was the reason that usually what you get, you get epsilon i in terms of h i uh, of the uh, of the of the of the of the metric so that you had so that was expanded in terms of e i i want to just uh, tell you that uh, uh, that was what we had so h, uh, h i um uh, well Let's write it in this way. Epsilon i divided by h i was e i. And therefore, epsilon i was h i e i. Then you can re replace it there, and then you will get the components that you want. Well, so far, so good. 
we know how to take the derivative of a scalar quantity, which was psi, and then from there we obtain uh, uh, the gradient. Lovely. There are two approaches that we can now think of. One is that, well, I have a vector of V, which is given in terms of VI epsilon I, if you remember that was a contravariant vector. Or I can have I can write it down in terms of the quariant formalism that will be VI epsilon I. Do you remember that I link this with a metric? So you have a quariant vector. And then what I'm interested in, what is happening with the change of vector, with the change of this vector, when the coordinate parameter, the coordinate parameters are changing. Okay, so indeed what I'm interested, what is happening with the change of the vector when we have a dqj, when this is changed. So indeed, the vector in uh, the vector that you have uh, uh, indeed is a function of qj, and then you look at the dv, uh, uh, which can be expanded in terms of the dqj, and you want to find out what are the results. Okay, that can be a, a contravariant, or that can be a quariant is up to you. You can go with either formalism, upper one or lower one. This is one approach. And the second approach is that, well, guys, we drive the gradient, but now I'm interested to find what is happening with the divergence. And by the way, this call it, let's call it the approach one. And we have approach number two. Well, we just define the gradient, which the component is given by epsilon i, derivative with respect to i, or I can write it as epsilon i derivative of i. And now we would like to obtain uh, divisions of a vector. Okay, these are the two approaches that you may look at it, and you want to you want to find out. So, and then the question is that well, uh, divergence of this vector will be indeed uh, divergence of the vector of v that will be given by epsilon i derivative of j. Now uh, that will be the dot product with uh, with uh, with the vector that you have it, which is vi vi uh, let's say vj epsilon 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 uh, j. Okay, which the result of this will be epsilon i that that the, uh, the, the the result which we have, which will be, I have to be careful by the way, derivative of i of vj uh, epsilon j. And now you want to find out what is going on with this term indeed, because it has two terms. One is the component of the vector, which is vj, and the other one is epsilon j. Uh, which uh, is the is the vector basis. So and and we know that both of them now they are function of the qi. And when you change the coordinate, that will get more complicated, and you have to do the derivative. It's up to you. I can 
use the approach one or approach two, or later on also, I, I can start with one and then I can extend it to, to the approach two. Let's go with the, with the first approach. So let's go with the first task, which is I have a vector of V. I want to find out what is happening with its derivative, with its derivative. Okay, so indeed I want to understand what is going on with the dv, and definitely if I calculate the dv, the result of this will be derivative of v with respect to qr, a qj, and then I have a dqj. That will be the result. So my goal is finding out this term, which is derivative of v with respect to qj. Okay, so let's do the calculation. So finding out the derivative of V with respect to QJ. And of course, V is a function Q. Then I have to, I have to do, take the derivative with respect to each component. So that will be the derivative of QJ of uh, VI epsilon I. Okay, clear? Now I just substituted the value that I have. Remember, this is a function of function of coordinate, or let's say QJ. This is also function of QJ. So for example, if you have uh, R equal to, I mean, A is equal to A row, row hat, a5 phi, phi hat and a z z hat. Now you will see that a rho, a phi, and a z, they are function of rho, phi, and z. They can be function of rho, phi, and z. And the same situation happens with rho, uh, rho hat, theta hat, and z hat, which in general they are function of the coordinate as well. So if you take the derivative of that, the result will be the derivative of first term multiplied by the second term plus first term, derivative of second term. So it will be derivative of VI with respect to QI, Q, sorry, QJ, epsilon I, plus VI, derivative of epsilon I with respect to QJ. Clear? I'm, I'm taking, it looks like taking the derivative of uh, uh, two function of F and 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 uh, well, um, I have to use a different name. <laughs> oh God, uh, A and B. Okay, that will be the, the A, a derivative of A with respect to QI, B plus the uh, A derivative of B with respect to QI. Clear? Good. Perfect. So now, well, the first term is clear, is that I will take the vectors component, I will take the derivative of this, multiplying by the uh, quariant basis. Okay, lovely. What about the second term? Derivative, derivative of epsilon i with respect to qj. What's that, the result? Is a vector. But where this vector is located? Yes, so I, I can use the metric to lower the index or, uh, or raise the index. I can use the GIJ, either subscript or superscript. Okay, I can use that. This is what I proved that, that any vector can be written in the quarian formalism or countervariant uh, formalism. And the link between the two will be given by the, uh, uh, oh, well, yes, yes, you can do that. Yeah. Good, so now the question is that, what happens with, uh, this term is clear, the first term is wonderful, have no problem. What is happening with the second term? 
The second term has two components. One is, is a vector, uh, uh, component which is VI, which is the contravariant vector component. And the other one is the derivative of the uh, epsilon I, which is the covariant basis with respect to the parameters of the space. So how do you do this calculation? How do you find that? Any thoughts, guys? Well, Mubin, you are partly right, but I will tell something more, okay? I'm expecting second term depends on the coordinate system. Uh, well, all of them, they are depending on the coordinate system, but where it is located, okay? Well, let, let's, let's say in this way. I'm taking, do you believe that R hat, theta hat, and phi hat in the spherical coordinate x hat, y hat, z hat in Cartesian coordinate, or rho hat, phi hat, and z hat in cylindrical coordinate. These are the three different coordinates that we discuss. They are complete bases, means that any vector can be expanded in terms of them. Do you agree on that or not? Yes. Lovely. So if you agree that these vectors, which is indeed in our calculation, we call those vectors epsilon i, which are the basis vector. If you believe that these basis vector are complete, which means that you are not expecting any new vectors happens uh, in, in your space. This is derivative of a vector with respect to parameters still is a vector in which space? In the QI space. What are the basis for the QI space? Is epsilon again, right? Now, these can be expanded in terms of the epsilons. So in, in fact, derivative of epsilon i with respect to qj is given by the summation of some coefficients, I call it this coefficient, on epsilon k. I call this k, and definitely that coefficient that I have, the circle one, is depending on i and j. Agreed, guys? Do you agree? That this vector can be expanded in terms of the epsilon k. Wonderful. If you agree, then I call this Christoffel notation. So I will write it gamma k i j epsilon k and of course i am summing up over the dummy index of k good perfect lovely so now what and, and of course i will come back to the gammas but don't forget why we are doing this because i want to find out what is happening with the derivative of V with respect to QJ. So I have VI, QJ, Epsilon I plus VI. This, this vector, the derivative of vector now is given by gamma KIJ Epsilon K. Okay. Ah, it seems that now, is not look like the Cartesian coordinate because when I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x, x vector, I mean, with respect to x, y vector with respect to x, y hat, 
with respect to X, Y, and et cetera. They are zeros, but here it seems that they are not zero because those, those vectors, they are, they are fixed. But here in a curved space or curvilinear uh, coordinates, indeed, uh, uh, you have an extra term which is coming from the derivatives of the unit vectors, okay? Which is new for us now. Lovely. Uh, well, and that's the result that I'm expecting. By the way, the first term, in the first term, the dummy index is I. The second term, dummy index is K. And also, I have another dummy index, which is I, okay? Now, there are two independent summations. So uh, I, I can change the language a little bit. So I can write this as, um, for example, this index, I can switch it to be K. Nothing, nothing will change. So that will be the derivative of VK respect to QJ. And I have epsilon K. And the second term is VI gamma of IJ K epsilon K. And now one of the summations is the same. So I will, I will factor it out. So it will be the summation of V derivative of VK with respect to QJ plus VI gamma IJ K epsilon K. Okay. That's the result of the derivative. So uh, we call this term the, uh, 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 the contravariant derivative, okay? And remember, we call this Christoffel symbol. And uh, let's call it Christopher symbol of second kind. Okay, you will see later on what I mean by by the by the first kind. Okay, and I will talk about the Christopher symbol uh, later on in in few uh, in few minutes. So uh, so we we call these the uh, the the quariant derivative. Okay, and the entire of these is known to us, or we call it with. V, K, Y, because it depends on K. For, oh, well, let's go with some other color that was too strong. Depends on K. And of course, you have a vector of K, which I call it epsilon K. And the summation is over the dummy index of this. I don't care about that but also depends on the derivative that I'm taking. So indeed, that is the derivative with respect to QI, QJ. And then I call these derivative with respect to J, okay? They call it covariant derivative. It's a very strange notation and my apologies for that. So, uh, so we call it, if you take the, the covariant derivative of a vector, then that will be the result. Vk deriv covariant derivative, we call this the covariant derivative with respect to j or semicolon j of epsilon k. Good? Is it clear? And definition. Vk semicolon j is derivative of VK with respect to QJ plus VI gamma I JK. Okay. Lovely. And it, you will see again in, in uh, shortly that this is really important. Of course, it is a strange notation maybe to you, um, why people they call it in this way? Well, uh, this is the notation that people they use it, but it is very very useful. Well, so far so good. Okay, any question? I'm looking at the Q and A. 
If there's any question, please type it there. I think that we don't have any questions right now, Professor. Okay, lovely. If there is no question, we will go on and we will look into how to do the calculation because here, uh, well, we say the derivative of epsilon i with respect to qj is given by gamma i j. Remember that was a that was a quadrant, and that also is a quadrant, and that's given by epsilon uh, uh, k. For short, also, also people they write these in this way. So derivative of j of epsilon i is given by gamma i j of k of epsilon k. Yes, it's a, it's a derivative for uh, um, someone is asking. It was derivative for a covariant vector, not for a contravariant vector. Okay. So, um, well, what was the vector that I use? And I have taken the derivative. That was the vector that I have written. I'm asking you the same, this question. Is this a covariant formalism, covariant representation, or is a contravariant? Which one is? Well, that is a contravariant vector. Why we call it instead covariant derivative? Because we are taking the derivative with respect to qj, okay? This is the derivative that I'm taking. And this derivative is written in this way. And we call this covariant derivative. Okay, is that clear? The vector is contravariant, but the derivative that we are taking is the quariant vector. A quari okay, perfect. Lovely. So now the question is how we can find the Christopher uh, uh, Christopher uh, uh, symbol. And before going there, remember that the, the, the derivative of a vector with respect to qj, or this is what we call it j of v, is equal to derivative of v k with respect to j and v j, v i gamma i j k epsilon k, okay? You may say that this a tensor. You may say that. One may say that this is a tensor of rank two, right? And is a mixed tensor. Someone may say this. This is not true. Why it is not true? Because if you change the coordinate, it, it's not acting like a vector. You may say the same situation here, that might be a tensor of rank three, of rank three. Or the entire of this is a tensor of rank two. But also this is wrong. Why? Because if you change the coordinate, you will see that they are not rotating in the same way as the tensors. But when we did the mathematics, we find out that it looks like VK semicolon of J of epsilon K. And, and if you look at the DV, which that was the reason that we did the entire of this calculation, which is derivative of V Q J. 
DQJ. And the result of this was, uh, was uh, uh, as we proven here, is a VK semicolon J, epsilon K, DQJ. And that can I write it as a VK semicolon J, DQJ of epsilon K. Now, if we look at the DV, you will see the DV is given in terms of V, K, J, D, Q, J, Epsilon, K. So the, the, the changes in V, in the vector of V, it gives me another vector here, okay, which is the, again, that's a contravariant, contravariant vector. And I know that DQI or DQJ also is a vector, is a contravariant vector. Then, so that one also is a vector. Is a vector. Then the result of this will be that this term as well now is a tensor of rank two, but is a mixed one, is a mixed tensor. Did you get the point? So the entire of, the, entire of this is acting like a vector. DQ also acting as a vector. So if you look at the, look at the way that we define it in the past, we say that if you call the entire of these as a Sorry, as a as a vector of B, which is BK. This vector of BK is equal to V semicolon of J and K DQJ. So we say that the B look like BK divided by DQJ, and this is equal to V uh, J semicolon K. So this should be a tensor of rank two. So this is the way that we we prove to uh, we prove that uh, uh, indeed both terms I mean both terms of derivative of J V K plus V I gamma I J K both of them they act like tensor it, a mix sensor of rank two, not individually. So the sum together, they will act like a, like a tensor, okay? Clear? Wonderful. Now the question that I have is that what are gamma i j k the question that i have is that finding the coefficient of expansions for the changes of of uh of the uh of the of the vector basis which indeed that is nothing more than uh taking the derivative uh, uh of uh, uh well look at the expansions that we had it was epsilon uh, i taking the derivative with respect to qj and that was given by gamma ijk epsilon k so that was the definition that we had and now i would say that let's do the dot product of both sides with epsilon i don't know kl for example if you do the dot product then you will get uh, epsilon l that product of derivative of epsilon i j, okay, equal to gamma k i j uh, epsilon k dot epsilon l. And the result of this is equal. 
Dr. Ibrahim, we have a question here from Subhra. Okay. He says, is there any concept of contravariant derivative? Is there any concept of the contravariant derivatives? Yes, there are concepts, uh, which I will talk about that. Is the geodesies. So if you go, what they call it, the parallel movement. So, and I ask it, what is epsilon k? Pay attention to the being, this is subscript k, and that one is epsilon l. Exactly, that is a delta of L K is the delta Kronecker. Okay, and then this means that it will be gamma of K I J delta of K L is not look like a, is, that's not a metric. Okay, pay, pay attention to that. And then, uh, of course, the summation or the dummy index of K will be replaced by L because it's a gamma function, a delta function. So it will be gamma of L i j. Therefore, gamma of i j L is equal to epsilon L. Now this, uh, this is a, 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 a contravariant basis. Derivative of epsilon i, derivative with respect to q j. Remember, that's the contravariant basis vector. And that one is the covariant basis vector. Okay. No, 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 Subra, I, I have not written. So some people, they are asking me that previously I have written that is a G, okay? Epsilon I dot Epsilon J is a G I J. Okay, now what we have it here is Epsilon I dot Epsilon J. So the indices are, one is subscript, the other one is a superscript. Okay. Dr. Ibrahim, we have this question from anonymous attendant say that. Yeah, uh, uh, this, this person is running too much. I mean, in the past, I say that also these, uh, I don't know what's, who is this person. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, I will be patient, please. Uh, in, in, at the end of the lecture, I will give an example of this. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, well, in the, where I have written Subra that uh, I wrote this as a GIJ. Can you tell me? Because that was what I have written as a delta of IJ. Is one uh, covariant, the other one today? Well, let's see what I have saying that. I have I have not looked into the metric. So where is the metric? Oh, oh, you are you are right. You are right. That is that is I have written. Sorry, my apologies. That's a delta of IJ. Thank you very much, Subra. Yeah, that's a delta of IJ. That's a, should be corrected. Thank you. I have to multiply by these in order to get the, 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 the gradient. Thank you very much for, for, for the correction. Okay, so good. So this is the, uh, the Christoffel notation of gamma ij. Now gamma ij l now is given by epsilon l dot derivative of j of epsilon i okay so this is what we uh, we need to do the calculation for in order to obtain in order to obtain uh the christopher 
the Christoffel symbol or symbols. Okay, is that clear? Wonderful. So, well, uh, in order to do so, uh, as, as Subra mentioned, so it's, it's better to, to work with the metric and the metric, let's work with the metric of the, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, uh, the quarian formalism of the metric, which is Gij, which is essentially is given by epsilon i dot epsilon j. This is what we know. And why I want to do that, because indeed, I can always lower the index here by using the metric. So uh, for example, I can write this as G uh, epsilon L can be replaced by G L uh, M, for example, epsilon M, so I can bring the the uh, I can I can drive the the contravariant basis from the covariant base of epsilon M. So if you substitute it here, you will get G uh, L M epsilon M dot derivative of epsilon I with respect to QJ, okay? And remember, now we have two indices of M, which you sum over, uh, sorry, we have one index of M, which you sum over. And indeed, from this calculation, you will see that somehow GLM uh, multiplied by epsilon M dot derivative of epsilon I derivative of QJ will give you, will give the Christopher symbol, okay, of the first, uh, of the second kind. In this calculation, you will see that epsilon m dot derivative of epsilon i uh, with respect to uh, uh, qj appears in the calculation, okay? So what I will do instead, I will say that let's make this symmetric. So indeed, I can work with Gij, which is the metric that I have, and it will it is epsilon i dot epsilon j. The goal is finding this term in uh, in terms of. Uh, metric, okay? Because I know the metric, this is what I want to do. Uh, Subra, in the previous lecture, I mean, Subra is asking why we are using the metric to lower the index. I mean, in the previous lecture, we've proven this. If you look at, if you look at the previous lecture, uh, when we show that any vector of V can be written as uh, VI epsilon I, or you can write it in the in the other formula, which is epsilon i i. We 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 prove this. Okay. If you look at the previous notes, uh, you will see that we we started with this, and we essentially we show that you can move from one uh, formalism to other formalism. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I will erase this. Going back to the to the question that I have is finding that in terms of the metric, because it's the metric that I know about this space. So I, I can I can build up the, the metric from epsilon i j uh, or epsilon i dot epsilon j, and then I should be able to get all of the equations that I needed. So let's start with the, with the metric. And uh, if you look at the Christopher, uh, symbol, you will see that the Christopher symbol is somehow given by the derivative. So what I have to do, I have to take the derivative of Gij with respect to Qk, for example. And let's look at the result of this. That will be um, 
uh, the, the, it's two vectors you, and both of them, they are function of QI. So you have to take the derivative of first one, which is epsilon I uh, with respect to QK dot epsilon J. And then I have epsilon I derivative uh, dot derivative of epsilon J with respect to QK. Okay. That's, that's one term. Well, it seems that somehow this is appears, I mean, if you look at that term and that term, they are very similar to these, but I have to, I have to find it in a proper way. Do you agree, guys? And usually we write that as derivative of k of g i j which is a derivative of k of epsilon i that epsilon j plus epsilon i that derivative of k of epsilon j lovely I can do the same thing and um, uh, let's do the calculation for uh, for other combinations that I have. I think I've written somewhere uh, in my notes how to do uh, the calculation for the rest. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, no, I have not written, it's strange. Um, uh, the principle of the... First kind and second kind. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, now let's do the, in the same way, let's do the calculation of, uh, so let's keep that one for ourselves. I needed data. Let's do the mathematics and find out what is going on with the derivative of I of G, J, K. So, Instead of uh, going with the uh, gij, I go with the gjk, which is epsilon j dot epsilon k, and I will take the derivative of that, and the result of this will be derivative of i of uh, uh, epsilon j dot epsilon k plus epsilon j dot derivative with respect to uh, derivative of i and epsilon k agreed then i can take the derivative of j of uh, g uh, i k always it should form a right hand so if you start with k it should be i j and if you take the derivative with respect to i it should be j k if you take the derivative with respect to uh, 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 j, it should be I, uh, k i. So let's go with that. And that will be the result, will be derivative of j of epsilon k, that epsilon i plus epsilon i, sorry, epsilon k that derivative of j of epsilon i good so i have three equations and from these three equations what i want to find out i want to find out uh, what is the result of uh, let's call it epsilon k dot derivative of j of epsilon i. I want to get these results, okay? So uh, I can sum these two together, okay? So if I sum the first two terms, it will be derivative of i of uh, uh, g, j k plus derivative of j of uh, uh, g k i the result of this will be uh, derivative of i of epsilon j 
got epsilon k plus epsilon j that derivative of i of epsilon k plus derivative of j of epsilon k dot epsilon i plus derivative uh, epsilon k that derivative of j of epsilon k oh sorry epsilon i my apologies and then this is the summation of the two terms the term two and term three if you sum them up together two plus three is the result that you have it here now if you if you take uh, two plus three minus one minus this term and if we uh, if we 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 subtract the, the minus one so uh so that will be the results it will be derivative of i g j k plus derivative of j g k i minus derivative of k of g i j if you take the, this derivative the result of this will be equal to uh which term they will cancel out each other uh, ba, 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 uh, ba, 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 epsilon j I have to I have to expand it in in the other way. So epsilon k epsilon k epsilon i and epsilon j they have to cancel out the two terms. This term and this term they cancel out the the other two terms, and then I will get two of uh, epsilon k dot derivative of i of epsilon j which indeed the result of this will be equal to epsilon k dot derivative of i of epsilon j equal to one half of derivative of i g j k uh, plus j g k i minus k g j i okay so that is the the result that i'm i'm uh, i expect and uh, let's look at the the notations that i was looking for uh I had uh, so now this form, which is i j and k, so it will it is epsilon k dot derivative of i epsilon j. I call these uh, uh, the Christopher uh, Christopher notation of the of the uh, 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 of the first kind. So this is called the Christoffel symbol of the first kind. Why is so? Because if you look at the the, the vectors, the vectors are uh, all of them. They are uh, they are uh, the quarian spaces. So and. While if you look at the Christopher notation, our Christopher symbol of second kind, that was given by a, a dot product of the equivariant and contravariant uh, basis. Here is a, is the is the equivariant basis, and uh, if you look at this net uh, the, this value, indeed uh, that is given by 
uh, I mean, in terms of the definition, we will get I, J, and K. Okay. And that's a symbol that I, we are using it. Okay. So, well, the Christopher symbol of I, J, and K is equal to uh, uh, one divided by two derivative of I, G, J, K, derivative of J, G, K, I, minus derivative of K of G, I, J. Okay. Any, any questions so far, guys? You are okay? Let's me look at uh, the notes if I have something extra that I have to tell you. All good, okay, Lisa, perfect. Uh, well, well, okay. So if you look at the, the, the Christopher notation of the, uh, of the second kind, which is this one, which is related to and this derivative, I will write it down. Just remember, and let me write it down somewhere. G L M epsilon M that derivative of I J. So gamma of uh, I J K or I J L was given by G L M epsilon m dot derivative of j of epsilon i. So indeed, this is glm. And if you look at that term, is nothing more than a ji of m. So the Christopher note a symbol of second kind and first kind, they are linked to each other. So that's a first kind. And that's a second kind and they are linked to each other via uh, these relations. So indeed, they can be linked uh, via, via uh, the metric, essentially. So if you take the metric, if, if you look at the contravariant metric, you can link the two together. So, and uh, indeed, that brings us to the conclusion that one divided by two GLM, I'm substituting the entire of the uh, derivatives that I have, and uh, I have to be, pay attention to ij. And by the way, this is symmetric, is glm. You can write it even ij and m is symmetric. And that can be seen also from this expression, by the way. That is symmetric. If you swap the i and j, it's, it's almost the same value. And the result of this will be equal to. Uh, uh, but, uh, a derivative with respect to i of g j m plus derivative with uh, j of g m i minus derivative with respect to m of g i j. Okay. And uh, this brings us to the conclusion well, uh, of course. If you take any quariant, uh, con contravariant vector of V, which is given by VI epsilon I, then you can take the derivative of that uh, DV, which essentially is given by uh, uh, VI covariant derivative with respect to J, uh, DQJ epsilon I, which this term, indeed is given by derivative of i with respect to qi, sorry, qj plus vi gamma ij, uh, um, uh, uh, I have to, I have to pay attention to the notation now. Well, vij, so that should be gamma of i. And here I call it M and N. So it will be VM and that one will be M and J. 
Okay, that will be the result. And then these gammas are given by the derivative of the metric. Yes, Subra, this GLM that you have it here is not the covariant, is the contravariant, contravariant index, uh, contravariant uh, uh, metric tensor, metric tensor. Again, that was discussing during the previous lecture. So uh, we had the covariant metric of uh, GMN, which was a covariant metric, and GMN multiplied by G, I don't know, uh, M and L, that was given by delta of N and L, was uh, isotropic uh, uh, delta Kronecker. And this was the way that we find the elements. And we say that that's essentially in the orthogonal basis is given by the inverse of, of, the, of the metric. Okay. So is there any, uh, in, any question? No, doctor, there's no questions. Okay, lovely. So now I will go uh, with, um, with the, uh, I will give it as an example for yourself. Just if you take not the covariant, contravariant formalism of the vector, but you will go with the covariant formalism, which is VI epsilon I, okay? It's your choice. You can choose either of them. And if you take this, and if you want to look at the, variation of the vector, which is essentially given by uh, um, dv, which is a qi or qj of uh, vi epsilon i, then you can do the same the same calculation. And indeed, in this kind of, cal and, and of course I have a dqj. And if you do the, the same calculation, you will see that uh, the derivative of uh, a a covariant vector instead uh, is given by the following expression, which is again the same expression of Vi derivative with Qj, but now the 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 Christoffel symbol of the second kind appears with a negative sign of Vk, and then you have gamma k of Ij. Okay, and I will give I will ask you to drive this by yourself by yourself. So is there another kind of, let's say, uh, derivative that you do the, the, the calculation? Why we care about this, guys? Why I pay attention and I spend a lot of time on doing these kind of calculations and that that's can be uh, a valid question that people they may ask. Uh, and well, in order to do so, I, I will ask you uh, to, to look at the second approach, which I did not go through this. And the second approach is, well, uh, uh, we say that, well, of course you can take a vector and you can take the derivative, but why we care about this? Because, well, is the concept of the divergence. So we look into the gradient and the concept of the gradient for a curvilinear space was that a gradient now is given by epsilon i, epsilon i derivative of i and that was the 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 vector, uh, the, the gradient uh, operator in uh, in a curvilinear space now i can ask myself what is happening what is the result of a divergence for for a divergence what you need you need a vector which this vector indeed is given in the same space, which essentially is AI uh, epsilon I is, uh, uh, is the contra variant vector. And uh, uh, ourselves, what we do, we look at the divergence of A vector, which means that we are looking at epsilon j, because it's not necessary the dummy index is the same for all of them, the derivative of j of now the vector that we have, which is ai epsilon i. 
uh, and and that's that's that was the definition that we had it for uh, for the divergence. Is there any question, by the way, guys? Oh, I I do still see. For vector of oh, Subra is asking for vector or tensor. We know metric or inverse metric uh, to lower and raising indices respectively, but can we raise or lower the indices of Christopher symbol? Um, uh, no, 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 no. Be, be careful because it's not a tensor. It, yes, a very, very good question. Supra, no, we cannot do that because Christopher uh, symbols, they are not tensors. You cannot, you cannot change the basis in this way. Okay. So if there is no question, I will go with it still with the continuation of the finding the divergence. So the gradient was easy. Let's look at the divergence, how to drive the divergence indeed. So, uh, well, I already drived what is happening with that. So is the derivative of a vector. And the derivative of a vector was given by epsilon j dot. And the, grid, the derivative of this vector was uh, given by uh, derivative of j of a i epsilon i plus uh, a i derivative of j of epsilon i, which that was given by the Christopher uh, symbol of the of the first kind, the second kind, and the result of this which was epsilon j dot. Uh, now I have derivative of i. AI and that was uh, AI gamma IJ. Mm, oh, let's get let's say uh, again. I have uh, I have forgotten this index, so that will be JJ. And if I change the this dummy index to K, then I can change also the other one to K, so that will be K. And then that will be also K. And I can use IJ here. Okay. And then it will be epsilon K. Good, guys. No question. When do you make the attendance from form of out? Oh. <laughs> they are asking when the form will be available. Okay. So, and if you do the dot product now, uh, the result of this will be uh, derivative of J of AK plus AI gamma K I J, and that will be epsilon J dot epsilon k. So the result of these will be substituting uh, every, uh, that will be delta of j k. So every, every k will be substituted by j. So the result will be j a j plus a i gamma i j and k will be replaced by j. So that is indeed uh, uh, the result of uh, a divergence. in any coordinates that you want. So indeed, what you need to do the to do the calculation is finding out what is happening with the Christopher uh, symbol. And remember the Christopher symbol, we just drive it here. So it was given by, let me write it down here. Uh, or do I have it somewhere? No, I don't have. So uh, it is one divided by two. Um, a gamma i j l is one divided by two of g l m, and then I have a derivative of g j m, and then of course is a is a rotation of that, so is a g m i minus derivative of m of g i j. So, so what I I need for for the divergence, I have to calculate this term, and then I have the uh, the the divisions and gamma ij uh, and uh, um, and the in the running index of uh, k 
k or m k was given by one divided by two g k uh g k m and then i had the derivative with respect to i of g j m plus derivative with respect to j of g m i minus derivative of m of g i j now in this calculation explicitly in this calculation what i need i need to replace k with a j so if you replace k with a j then you will get j i j one divided by two g j m derivative of i g j m plus derivative with respect to j g m i minus derivative of m g i j and if you simplify this simply that will be given by one divided by two of g uh, uh, j uh, m and the rest will be some simplify and will be given by by derivative of g uh, i m with respect to q uh, i a q k uh, sorry q m Okay. Good. So that is the that is the 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 Christopher notations that uh, um, our symbol that we have it for for the divisions. You substitute it inside of that, and then you will get you will get the, the divisions in any other coordinates. Okay, so in the short, if, if you want to write it down, uh, indeed the divisions of a vector, if you do the calculation, uh, you will get it to be equal to one divided by square root of uh, determinant, okay, which I will call it G, determinant of the metric, And then you will get derivative with respect to uh, the, the variables that you have in the parameters that is QK. And then you have the square root of the determinant again. And then you have the vectors, which is VK. Okay. So that's the way that uh, it simplifies the calculation. And the same way you can do the calculation to find out what is going on with the Laplacian of a scalar. So because Laplacian will be the divisions of a gradient. So we already did the calculation for, for a gradient and you can substitute it inside of that and you will get the Laplacian in any coordinate, uh, in any coordinate. So for example, if you want to solve wave equation close to a black hole, if you want to solve a wave equation, uh, or Schrodinger equation close to a black hole or um, uh, or um, uh, or hydrogen atom close to black hole, you can always use this transformation. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that is that is what we 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 work with, and 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 it's really really helpful when you choose the coordinate based on the symmetry that you have, but you have no idea what are the derivatives, what are the gradients, what are the divisions in that space. And easily you can build up all of those calculuses in any arbitrary coordinate that you have it. It can, in not necessarily is, is orthogonal coordinate. It can be even uh, non-orthogonal coordinates and easily you can build up, uh, build up the, the calculation uh, in that specific base. So, uh, um, I um, the, the rest of the lecture, the, the next 20 minutes, I will go with uh, with application of these in, in classical mechanics. So assuming that, um, for example, uh, you have any manifold, any any um, any places like I don't know, like a, a paper that I have, okay? And this paper has any forms that you may have it. So it's tilted. It can be a sphere. It can be a cylinder. Uh, it can be uh, any geometry that you want. And 
this space is given by uh, a metric. So assuming that you have any space that you want, so which is given by a metric of gij, or indeed is given by the parameter of qi, which is telling what's going on with this manifold or the surface that you have. For example, it can be a sphere. And then you have an object which you are moving this object or letting this object to move from one point to another plane. So for example, that can be your manifold that you have, which is a surface. Okay. And then you have an object which is moving from one place to another place, A, B. And this space is given by Q, J. <coughs> Okay, so, and you have this kind of space and you have these parameters, which is QI. And now, uh, well, of course, for this space, uh, you can define what is happening with the, uh, with the displacement or the length. Length in that specific space, which is indeed, uh, is given by, let's say, dl squared. So this is the dl. And the length indeed is dr dot dr. We agree about that. So you have infinitely small displacement here, dr, and then uh, you, you do the dot product and you will get the length. And if you do it for any parameter of qi, that will be indeed... Um, derivative of r with respect to qi and then you have a dqi and then you have the dot product with derivative of r with respect to qj and the uh, dqj and you if you do this that will be exactly the elements of the metric which we had qi dot derivative of r with respect to qj and then you have a qi qj which is epsilon i dot epsilon j dqi dqj. So we have the element of the of uh, uh, of the length, which is in is infinitely small displacement that you have, and we assume that this is this object is moving freely, so it's not under any force. Okay. By the way, that can be also applied to gravity. And the gravity, we assume that is the, is the curvature of the space and time. So, uh, so that's that's the reason that I, uh, when I say force, I, I don't mean electromagnetic force. Of course, it can be expanded also in this way. But let's say that freely is moving, but is on a manifold, is on a geometry which is moving. Okay. So now I'm asking you what is happening with the variation of the length. So the length that we have here, which is the infinitely small displacement, is given by this relationship. But I know that if you move from point of A to point of B, which is freely this object is moving in that space, the minimum distance, the minimum, is given by the interaction that I have. It looks like the Fermat principle. So indeed, what you need, you want to find out that this DL is minimized for that specific because it can go from this pass or it can go from the other pass or any other pass here. But there is only one pass which this uh, uh, variation of DL is, is uh, equal to is minimized. So uh, there are some question. How do we identify curve space from the form of the metric? So, uh, well, uh, uh, for example, I say the sphere, right? The spherical one. Is it is a curve space or not? Yes, okay, fantastic. So is one of the possibilities. And then I can get the metric from this. Okay, good. 
So uh, yes, it, it was. And the the question that I ask, uh, uh, one of the one of the attendees answer to the question, and while well, the the answer was yes, of course. What I have to do, I have to do the integration of this DL, okay, over the pass that I have it. So our all one of those paths, it can be on the path of orange, or it can be a be, uh, pass of uh, DL, or it can be pass of the green, which is DL, from the point of A to B, A to B, A to B. And then I have to find uh the the minimum uh, value of that so what i have to do i have to take the derivative of these and making it equal to zero and that will give me which one is minimum right do you agree on that is is the the calculus the uh, the, the the basic calculus that we learned in the past Do you agree? Mobin, say yes. How we find the optimal points? You take the derivative equal to zero. This is exactly what we are doing. We we say that well, uh, that's the that's the parameter that I have, and these parameters should be optimized because that's depending on the pass. It depends on the the the, the, the pass that I I'm going with that. And uh, and then I will take the derivative in equal to zero. That's exactly what Isa says that his application of the derivative is this. Well, wonderful. So I already find, found the derivative in any geometry that I have. So dl, which is the distance that I have, power of two is given by gij dqi dqj. All right. And that's the element of the length uh, uh, power of two. Let's take the variation of this. Remember, I'm taking the variation. It will be the variation of dl power of two, which is gij dqi dqj. And this is, remember, is the variation which is a small changes. So let's do the calculation. The variation acts like a derivative as, as Isa mentioned a couple of times. So uh, that will be the delta of dl square, which is the derivative of dl square it is two uh, uh, um, derivative of uh, 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 dl which is derivative which is, would be two power of minus one I don't write it and then it will be the delta of dl okay it looks like x power of two when you take the derivative it will be two uh, dx dy and then you have x this is what I have written here. And then on the right side, what I have, I have the derivative. Uh, sorry, I have to, I'm writing with a, with a symbol derivative of gij dqi dqj. Or I have. Uh, gij derivative of dqi dqj or i have gij dqi delta of dqj good question I've taken the derivative and derivative will be expanded there. No questions? Is it all clear? Yes, you can keep going with the explanation there, doctor. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. So then uh, 
indeed the variation of dl okay so it will be i'm looking only at that specific term this is what i am looking for uh, will be delta of dl is equal to one half of the the entire of this term divided by dl entire of this term and then what i can do also i can write it as a one half of one divided by dl one divided by dl multiplied by dl do you agree okay so let's do that it will be one divided by two then it will be the variation of the of the metric so it will be delta of gij which i have to do the calculation by the way is 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 challenging by itself and then i have a dqi dl dqj dl i have taken the two dl and i place it place them here and then i have plus gij now i have the delta of uh, uh dqi dqj Okay, and uh, and when I have a delta of dqi dqj, I bring the delta inside of this because I'm looking at the at the infinitely small uh, variation in the dqj. So what I have, I have uh, now d dl of delta of qi dqj dq L plus GIJ DQI DL. And then I have D DL of Delta of QJ. Okay. Questions? Which two L um, under four? I, so look, the two L is here, right? And I say that I can multiply by in, I can multiply by DL, and I can I can uh, put another DL in the denominator. Good. And now I have two DLs, DL DL here. I brought them here, here 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 and here is clear isa oh perfect i don't know was isa or mobin mobin asked okay in the upper line upper line well uh again look at look at this we had the delta of l dl square and delta of dl square is 2 dl delta of dl right but what i am looking for is a dl delta of dl and delta of dl will be indeed is the entire of this side divided by 2 dl which i did that Clear? I don't know who asked the question, but let's see. Is underlined. Oh, Isai, are you are you are you replying to to your friend? <laughs> okay. Okay. I assumed it now is clear. Let me see. Oh, in the other line, I, I I don't understand really that because I keep I keep the the 
the the two underline is here, right? In the dominator. The two L is here, right? Then I say that I will multiply by another DL and I will get another DL here. So now I have one divided by two DL DL. Okay. And now these, these parentheses, whatever we have is the upper one. And then what I have done, I distributed DL DL into dominators. This is what I have done here. Yes, uh, delta and uh, and uh, and uh, operators they commit with each other, and d they commit with each other. Yes. Well, I mean, it's is 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 the derivatives. It looks like a, 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 is the variation that you have is not a two conjugate uh, communities, a uh, quantities. So delta and D, they will commit with each other. Uh, they are simple derivatives. Uh, Isa, I'm not following your question, to be honest with you. I will let you um, let you uh, look at the video another time and then see if whether we are, I'm missing anything. You can drop me an email afterwards. Okay, <laughs> so the variations indeed, the variation of delta of integral of dl, which will be equal to zero, then it becomes something like that. It will be uh, integral of one half of delta, uh, let me write the delta in this way, Delta of Gij dqi dl dqj dl plus Gij d dl of delta qi. And then I have D D L of Q J. And then I have plus G I J D Q I D L D D L of Delta of Q J. Dr. Ibrahim, we have yes. a question. Uh, Subra says, what are the differences of slash delta and D operators are the same derivative operators? Oh, no, it's, uh, well, yes, they are the same. Uh, but, uh, well, you say that DQ, okay, is the small changes in the Q, right? DQI, what's that? Small changes in qi because you change the qi to be qi plus delta qi right but what is the delta of qi <laughs> delta of qi now <laughs> qi can be a function of any qj <laughs> and if you change the, the derivative of that that will be delta of a QI will be the derivative of QI with respect to QJ. And then you had uh, uh, delta of QJ, okay? In these specific cases that I have, which I assume that the parameters there are orthogonal to each other, they're identical, is a small displacement. And this small displacement, for example, in that specific case, let's call it in this way, um, Delta of QI is indeed QI changes to QI plus Delta QI. If they are orthogonal, if we assume that the QIs are orthogonal. Yes, you are You are right. It's, it's just a small displacement. One of them is a D, the other one is a, uh, is a Delta. Is clear? Okay. 
Okay. So, uh, well, I, I don't believe that in, in three minutes I, I will be able to finish this. Uh, uh, so, um, but anyway, let's, let's go with this. At least I can take the derivative of the metric because the derivative of metric is, is, uh, is very important. So and now I'm looking at the derivative of the metric. So how many, how many terms do I have? I have a delta i, by the way, remember, that's the variation in the parameters that I have. That's a variation in the parameters that I have is wonderful, is the, exactly what I was looking for. But also the metric, it seems that the variation of the metric also is playing role. So how the metric is changing slowly upon changing QIs, okay? <laughs> or the parameters that you have. So then I have to do the calculation and find out what is going on with the delta of gij. Okay, and that is that is really uh, the 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 point that we have to we have to pay attention. So the metric indeed gij is a function of the parameters that we have. Okay, let's call it is a qk is a function of this. Good. I'm looking at the questions. And then uh, if you look at the metric and uh, you want to find out what is happening with the delta of, uh, let's bring it down. I want to find out what is going on with delta of the uh, QI, which is this delta. Sorry, gij now is the delta of the metric which we we have. I I messed up. Oh gosh, so is the delta of uh, gij which is a function of qk, and how do you do the calculation of that? We just discussed this. So it will be the derivative of gij with respect to qk, and then you do the variation on the on the uh, on the uh, dq. So uh, the uh, qk. So it will be d of qk. Good. And you, the only things that you need to do is is substituting these. And uh, uh, that will be that will be the result. So I will keep uh, going with uh, with this calculation for the next lecture. I will encourage you to go through this uh, point by point, and uh, and having a feeling about these kind of derivatives and uh, and uh, and the variations. And next lecture, you will see that this variation in in the in the curves curve linear coordinates uh, let's say without even force even you can include the force uh, you will see that the kind of derivatives that you will do uh, the motions of the particle that you will obtain in that space it appears in terms of the Christopher uh, symbols and you will appreciate why the derivatives uh, or the uh, covariant derivatives play a significant role in in physics and explicitly in in a, in a, a special and uh, in general relativity. So I will stop here, and um, I I will be available for a couple of questions. <laughs>